गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू ए एस इलेवन वेलकम टू ए एस इलेवन ए एस इलेवन इज कॉल्ड अकाउंटिंग फॉर द इफेक्ट ऑफ चेंजेस इन फॉरन एक्सचेंज रेट सम स्टूडेंट्स कॉल इट फॉरन एक्सचेंज चैप्टर दिस इज नॉट अ फॉरन एक्सचेंज चैप्टर सम लेस लर्नड पीपल से फॉरेक्स टॉपिक that is also not right it is the accounting for the full name very few people can correctly answer is accounting for the effect of changes in foreign exchange rate now understand that more and more indian companies are having transactions in foreign currency so we are transacting as seller we are exporting goods we are transacting as buyers we are importing goods okay and therefore the question arises how to convert the transactions which have taken place in foreign currency into your presentation currency or reporting currency or what is called home currency because in india we are going to prepare financial statement in rupees and the transaction have taken in taken place in dollar or euro or pound or yen then there must be some standard which must guide us how to convert these transactions in foreign currency into the home currency or reporting currency okay so the scope of the standard is three items are covered by this standard how many three focus on what i am saying the three items which are covered by the standard are accounting for transaction in foreign currency for example if you are an exporter you have exported goods of 100 dollar to a customer in usa how will this be recorded or you are an importer you have imported goods of 105 dollar from a supplier in usa how will you record or example you have taken loan from britain 5 lakhs pound how are you going to record such transactions so that is the first 50% of this chapter we are going to take questions where transactions will occur in foreign currency how are we going to record those transaction which rate i will apply for recording such transaction what will be the treatment of exchange difference that will arise so that is the theme of the first part second part of this chapter will deal with translating financial statement of foreign operations translating financial statement of foreign operations that means suppose if we have a branch in usa or if we have subsidiary in britain if we have associate in pakistan or if we have joint venture in australia currencies are different currencies are different here the currency is dollar here it is pound here it is pakistani rupee and here it is australian dollar aud how are you going to convert this financial statement and incorporate with your financial statement because if you have a foreign branch then the transactions of the foreign branches are your transaction only and those needs to be recorded in your books 
if you have subsidiary associate and joint venture if you have subsidiary associate and joint venture then in that case their financial statements are consolidated with your financial statement but in order to consolidate the financial statement of a foreign subsidiary with your financial statement one is in dollar one is in rupees so i need to convert the financial statement of foreign subsidiary foreign associate foreign joint venture into our reporting currency but how to do it which rate to be used what treatment should be given for the exchange differences those are covered by the part 2 of this chapter that is called translation of financial statement of foreign operation and the third part covered by this chapter is forward contracts oh what is forward contract forward contract we are going to discuss in detail it is a contract to buy or sell foreign currency at a future date it is a contract to buy or sell foreign currency at a future date the contract is entered today rate is negotiated today but the purchase or sale will happen at a later date so that is called forward contract that is you enter into a contract that you need to buy or sell foreign exchange after 3 months after 3 months suppose i need 1 lakh dollar so there is a risk that the dollar rate may appreciate so what i will do i will enter into a contract today with a foreign exchange dealer that i want to buy 1 lakh dollar after 3 months how much will you charge he says i will charge you 80 rupees per dollar we sign an agreement after 3 months i will go with 80 rupees i will hand over him 80 rupees and he will hand over me 1 dollar that is forward contract so our risk is reduced after 3 months even if dollar rate is 82 or 83 if i have taken a forward contract i will be able to purchase dollar at pre determined rate so the purpose of forward contract is usually to protect you from fluctuation in foreign exchange rates okay so our topic will cover three areas transaction in foreign currency translating the financial statement of a foreign operation like branch subsidiary associates and joint venture and then how to account for forward contracts so before i proceed further we need to understand some important terms because this chapter will depend on these terms that we are going to discuss today so this is suppose a balance sheet in this balance sheet you have share capital reserve and surplus then you have non current liability where you may have some borrowing provisions other current li non current liability then you have asset side you have property plant equipment intangible asset okay then some example investment then inventory debtors bills receivable loans and advances cash bank so this is usually a balance sheet what the standard says divide your balance sheet items into two categories monetary item and non monetary item monetary item and non monetary item so very important point how will you identify whether a given asset or a liability item is a monetary item or a 
non monetary item whether a given asset or a liability item is a monetary item or a non monetary item so the standard has defined monetary items as monetary items are money held so money held means in your balance sheet cash in hand is always monetary item cash at bank is always monetary item and those other assets and liabilities to be received or paid in fixed or determinable amount of money those other assets and liabilities which are receivable or payable in fixed or at least determinable amount of money they are called monetary item that means simply put suppose i have a debtor i have to receive from debtor 100 dollar so the amount is receivable in a fixed amount 100 dot suppose i have taken a loan 1 lakh dollar plus i have to pay 5% interest on that so it is a monetary liability because the amount is payable in a determinable amount of money 1 lakh dollar plus 5% interest 1 lakh 5000 dollar so i know or i can calculate how much unit of currency we have to receive or pay how much unit of currency we have to receive or pay if that is identifiable if that is identifiable then we will call it as a monetary item so then your question will be sir give me some example of monetary items so examples are given in your notes also and whatever is not printed you can note it down now very important because unless you can identify that this is a monetary item or this is a non monetary item it will become difficult to apply this standard okay so example cash bank receivable payable loan pension and other benefits to be payable in cash so if i have to pay 5000 dollar pension that is also monetary item if i have to pay stipend 500 dollar that is also monetary item and provisions that are to be settled in cash if i have to pay gratuity 500 dollar even that gratuity 500 dollar payable is a monetary item so monetary items are those item where the amount to be received or paid is fixed or determinable okay like from a debtor 100 dollar is receivable to a creditor 200 dollar is payable to a bank 5000 dollar is payable plus 5% interest is payable to a article clerk 500 dollar is payable so these are monetary items even investment in government security is a monetary item not share very careful investment in government security is a monetary item why if you have invested in a government security 100 dollar so you will receive 100 dollar plus you will receive a fixed 5% interest so the amount is fixed or determinable question for you whether investment in equity share is monetary item since you are highly intelligent student at least this is what i think whether investment in equity share is a monetary item yes or no option a yes option b no so those who are lazy in typing they can just type a or b whether investment in equity share is a monetary item the answer is no the answer is no the reason is the amount is not fixed or determinable the amount is not fixed or determinable okay 3 days ago reliance share price was 2800 rupees and today 
the reliance share price is 2500 rupees where is the amount fixed or determinable anything can happen okay so therefore investment in equity share is not a monetary item okay one more question whether inventory is a monetary item whether goods closing stock whether it is a monetary item yes or no everybody should reply and you don't have to do much effort either type a yes or type b no okay yes or no yes or no so please tell me the answer is no the student is right the student no is right inventory does not have a fixed amount your value can go up or your value can go down okay stock value today is 5000 rupees the stock value tomorrow can be 10000 rupees also it depends so therefore inventory is not a monetary item okay one more question answer whether ppe is a monetary item whether ppe is a monetary item come on option a yes option b no whether property plant whether your building where you stay now today you see your building okay like this okay and then check whether it is monetary or non monetary your house where you stay whether it is monetary or non monetary okay any answer for this question the answer is again no because the value of building can change tomorrow there is no fixed or determinable amount okay one more then i will go to next paragraph whether intangible asset like software whether intangible asset for example let us say software is it a monetary item quickly answer yes or no yes or no so the answer for this is also monet software there is no fixed or determinable amount it can go up it can go down so this is also non monetary item so the next is the definition of non monetary item so the answer is simple if an asset or liability is not a monetary item then it is a non monetary item if an asset or liability is not a monetary item then it is a non monetary item so example we have discussed ppe or intangible asset or investment in equity securities or prepaid expenses in prepaid expenses you will receive services not cash so therefore it is a non monetary item you will get services goodwill is a non monetary item because there is no fixed or determinable amount okay so now for understanding purpose in your book we have average rate closing rate spot rate so these three terms i will discuss to today and immediately we will take few questions once the basics are clear this chapter uses terms like closing rate at several places they will ask you to use closing rate so what do you mean by closing rate closing rate means the rate of exchange on the balance sheet date so a balance sheet date suppose is 31st march 22 and on that date the exchange rate between dollar and rupees is rupees 80 per dollar on that day then this rate will be called as 
closing rate rate of exchange on the balance sheet date and this is very important because after some time you will see many items are required to be measured using closing rate on the balance sheet date so if you have a foreign currency denominated asset or liability then many of them but not all of them many of them will be measured using the closing rate and the next is spot exchange rate spot exchange rate is the exchange rate for immediate delivery spot exchange rate is the exchange rate for immediate delivery what do you mean by immediate delivery suppose today is 29th 29 december suppose i go to a foreign exchange dealer i go to a entity which deals in foreign exchange usually banks banks are authorized by rbi to deal in foreign exchange and i ask and i ask the bank that i want to purchase 100 dollar today i want to purchase 100 dollar today what is the exchange rate today so today he says the exchange rate is 82 rupees per dollar oh my god this is called spot exchange rate or just spot rate or you can just simply call it spot rate today's rate if today i go to buy or sell dollar what will be the amount you will pay or receive that is called today's rate and then what is the average rate as the name suggest average rate means average of the exchange rate in force during a period average of the exchange rate in force during a period for example monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday the exchange rates are given like this 75 75.50 75.50 77 again 76.50 75 74.75 something like this and then you are asked to calculate the average rate so the average rate will be simply the average of all these numbers so you will take the total in our example and divide by seven observations so that is called average rate average rate in the question will be supplied to you 99.99% time if not given then the student will have to calculate the average rate so it will be weekly average or it can be monthly average it can be average of a fortnight or sometimes it can be just the average of opening and closing balance but that is not a right method okay so this is about different types of exchange rate why we are discussing it for translating certain item closing rate will be required for translating certain item spot rate will be required and for translating certain item average rate will be required so that is what we will learn which rate will be used when the problem with exchange rate is that it keeps fluctuating every day starting from the beginning of the year till the end of the year the exchange rate fluctuates and that is the challenge before a businessman and also before an accountant like you which rate will be applied so after discussing those three important rates closing rate spot rate average rate now let us come to the next point called exchange difference due to change in exchange rate due to change in exchange rate exchange difference arises when that transaction is settled or translated on balance sheet date 
so what what did i say is the difference resulting from reporting the same number of units of a foreign currency in reporting currency at different exchange rate let us understand with the help of some numbers goods sold on goods sold on 1st march 2022 dollar 100 and exchange rate was rupees 75 per dollar on balance sheet date on balance sheet date the exchange rate is rupees 80 per dollar on balance sheet date exchange rate is rupees 80 per dollar past journal entries so what will happen now what will happen now understand you are a good student we have to understand the basics first on 1st march 2022 when the goods will be sold the entry will be debtors account debit 100 into 75 7500 to sales 7500 to 7500 to 7500 then i will go to 31st march 2022 now the problem is the debtor has not yet made the payment payment is still outstanding payment is still outstanding so the payment is still outstanding what we will do the standard says as 11 says you will revalue the debtor hello ji you will revalue the debtor at closing rate so now the value of this debtor has become 100 into 80 100 into 80 8000 debtor value is 8000 however in your books the debtors are appearing at 7500 so you have to pass an entry like this debtors account debit 100 into bracket 80 minus 75 500 to exchange difference this is called exchange difference 500 rupees now we'll read the definition the definition is is the difference resulting from this is the difference resulting from reporting the same number of units of a foreign currency here also it was 100 here also it is 100 but originally it was reported at 75 and now it is reported at 80 so this results into a difference and that difference is called as exchange difference that difference is called as exchange difference okay so the next issue will arise which we are going to discuss later what is the treatment of exchange difference you will ask this question but today immediately i will not reply the standard will tell you what will be the further treatment of this difference whether it will be charged to pnl account whether it will be capitalized or whether it will be deferred so wait for that till that time keep thinking what can be the difference of exchange difference another definition is exchange rate exchange rate means the ratio for exchange of two currencies exchange rate means ratio for exchange of two currencies for example if i say rupees 76 per dollar this is exchange rate between rupees and dollar or if i say 89 rupees per euro this is exchange rate between rupee and euro 1 euro is 
equal to 89 rupees or if I say 101 rupee per pound this is rate between rupee and pound 1 pound is equivalent to 101 rupee today so this rate keeps on changing for different with different currencies we have different rates so company's life is difficult if the company deal with many exchange rates many type of foreign currency now the next important point is what is reporting currency what is reporting currency reporting currency means the currency in which financial statements are presented so please guess what is the reporting currency for indian companies what is the reporting company uh, currency for indian companies which are registered under companies act question for you to check whether you are awake or not what is the reporting currency for indian companies in which com in which currency indian companies prepare their financial statement come on reply in which currency indian companies prepare their financial statement the answer is rupee very good you will find all indian companies prepare their financial statement in rupee you are right sanket sakshi saurav ranjit falak you are right you people seem like a potential merit holder if you put some more effort right now effort is not enough ganesh jay ganesh usha you are right reporting currency need not be home currency reporting currency may not be need not be home currency that means if you are preparing financial statement in pound pound becomes reporting currency okay but in india most companies will prepare in rupee but whatever currency you use for preparing financial statement that is called reporting currency and then what is foreign currency foreign currency means all currencies all currencies minus reporting currency so for indians other than indian rupee other than indian rupee all currencies are foreign currency okay so give me name of 10 foreign currencies i want to check your general knowledge today other than dollar pound euro and yen 10 foreign currency you have to answer quickly but it should not be dollar pound euro yen let us see who will give me correct answer 10 foreign currencies other than dollar pound euro yen dollar pound euro yen i have already given the example so students are now thinking what is other foreign currency so one mr tiwari singh taka okay bangladesh currency taka bus only one you know are everybody saying taka 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 dinar dinar is used in uh, arabic countries dinar one person said dinar taka and dinar only two answers unbelievable this, there are total 200 countries and you are only answering uh, dinar rial rial tanya is saying rial okay frank one person said frank but that frank is now no longer in use okay peso this frank and peso they have now started using euro then thai baht it seems this fellow has gone to thailand that is why he knows thai baht 
रूबल रूबल इज द करेंसी ऑफ रशिया पाउंड सी दिस फेलो पाउंड आई टोल्ड हिम नॉट टू से पाउंड स्टिल ही सेड पाउंड आर यू अवेक और आर यू इन हाफ स्लीप मोड मिस्टर जतीन ओके इनफ सो इट मीन्स योर जनरल नॉलेज इज ओके टाइप बट दैट इज इनफ फॉर सॉल्विंग क्वेश्चन और दिरहम करेक्ट दिरहम आई थिंक इन दुबई दे यूज दिरहम सम ईयर्स अगो आई हैड गॉन टू दुबई सो आई थिंक आई हैड यूज दिरहम अमेरिकन ऑस्ट्रेलियन डॉलर कैनेडियन डॉलर चाइनीज रेन मिम्बी लीरा ओके बैक टू बिजनेस इनफ ऑफ जनरल नॉलेज what is a foreign operation foreign operation can be subsidiary associate joint venture or a branch in your syllabus there is a branch account also where you will study in detail about foreign branches the accounting of foreign branches you will do as per as 11 which you are studying right now these three are used for consolidation purpose but good news is that your current syllabus which you are learning right now does not have consolidation so only theoretical discussion will happen no problem will be solved for subsidiary associate and joint venture because it's not a part of your current syllabus okay bitcoin is not a foreign currency somebody said bitcoin it is not a foreign currency so foreign operation can be subsidiary associate joint venture or branch of the reporting enterprise whose activities are based or conducted the activity of that foreign branch or foreign subsidiary is conducted in a country other than the country of the reporting enterprise so what is important is their activity must be conducted outside india it is not mandatory that they must be registered outside india but their activity must be conducted outside india from indian company's point of view next point is forward contract forward contract i have explained it to you in the beginning only a contract or an agreement entered today today is what day 29 inter today that we are going to buy or sell after 3 months at rupees 80 per dollar contract inter today contract inter today but the actual transaction actual transaction will occur later actual transaction will occur later at a predetermined rate at a predetermined rate okay once the rate is logged then you are not worried whether the rate goes up or whether the rate comes down the party will be able to exchange dollar and rupees at the rate of rupees 80 this 80 rupees is called what is written in the next line forward rate forward rate is the rate specified under a forward contract forward rate is the rate specified in a forward contract next is integral versus non integral foreign operation last three points integral versus non integral foreign operation so what is an integral foreign operation integral foreign operation now for accounting purpose whenever you solve a question especially your branch account question because branch account foreign branch is a part of your syllabus you need to check whether this foreign operation is integral or non integral sir how do i identify whether it is integral or non integral so you have to see whether the activity of the foreign operation are an integral part of those of the reporting enterprise whether it is a 
part and parcel whether it is integral part and parcel of those of the reporting enterprise still it is a difficult line so what does it mean it means you need to understand with the help of an example example tata motors limited has a branch in africa to sell cars so what is the purpose of this branch the purpose of this branch is to sell cars which is manufactured by tata motors in africa so what it is doing it is just doing the same activity which tata motors limited is doing it is an extended arm of tata motors it is an extended arm of tata motors okay that means it is there it is to promote the business of reporting company it is to promote the business of reporting company in a foreign land in a foreign land is it right that is called integral operation so you will find when you go to some foreign country you will find bank of baroda is there you will be surprised oh i am in singapore how come bank of baroda is there so bank of baroda has opened a branch in singapore to extend their banking business in that country is it right so now you got the idea when the same business is conducted in a foreign country to promote your business it is called integral then what is non integral foreign operation so again mathematics all foreign operation minus integral foreign operation is equal to non integral foreign operation so here my objective is not to carry out day to day business there it is more like a passive investment it is more like a passive investment passive investment means you do not participate do not participate in day to day running of the business you are more like an investor your objective is to earn dividend and capital gain so do not participate in day to day running of the business okay let us say you are holding for example purpose only 20% shares of tesla only for example otherwise you will become a billionaire if in actual you hold 20% share in tesla but you are just an investor you really are not interested in day to day management of that business that you have left to their company only you know that after one year the price will go up i will sell the share at a higher price i will earn capital gain and i will become billionaire this is a non integral foreign operation because your activity is all together different from that company and you are not really interested in carrying out day to day management and operation of that company so in the later part of this chapter when we will come to accounting of foreign operation i will again ask you this question what is the difference between integral and non integral foreign operation okay so one last definition is net investment in a net investment amount invested amount invested in a non integral foreign operation so basically here you are an investor more an investor and less a businessman your objective is to earn return in the form of dividend interest capital gain and you are not really participating in the day to day running management and operations of the business 
So net investment in a foreign operation is the reporting enterprise share in the net assets of that operation. So what is your net asset, share in net assets? So you will take here investment in share plus investment in debt security minus sometime they may invest in your company minus investment made by non integral foreign operation in your company that is why the word used is net investment made by you in the form of share debenture bond loan minus investment made by that company in your loan or debenture so that is net investment in non integral foreign operation these are usually for long term these are usually for long term okay so now don't lose your sleep over this because there is only one or two places where I will require this non-integral foreign operation. So let us move further. Now comes the accounting part. So be very alert. This is a very easy chapter, but many of your friends will say it is a difficult chapter. The reason being, if you don't understand right from the basics, you may find it difficult. Otherwise, it's a very easy chapter. So First thing is recognition. Our topic has three parts. First part is transaction entered into transaction entered into foreign currency. FC means foreign currency. So today suppose I entered into a transaction. The standard says the moment you enter into a transaction in foreign currency, the first priority will be given to the rate of exchange on the date of transaction. The first priority will be given to the rate of exchange on the date of transaction. First priority always exchange rate on the date of transaction. So suppose the rate of exchange is 76 rupees per dollar today we sold goods worth rupees 100 dollar sorry dollar 100 worth worth dollar 100 and the rate today is given to you 76 rupees what will you do you will pass an entry suppose it is a credit sale data account debit to sales but you have sold goods worth 100 dollar your reporting currency is rupees, you can't write hundred dollar in your ledger. You have to write all the entries in your reporting currency that is rupees. So what I'll do, I will say hundred dollar into 76 rupees per dollar. So I am going to debit today 7600 rupees. I am going to debit 7600 rupees. That is the meaning of this first line that if any transaction takes place in foreign currency any transaction when it takes place in foreign currency first you apply the exchange rate on the date of transaction but there is a alternative treatment also suggested another choice is given you can use average rate if average rate is realistic. Now some companies may have a high frequency of transaction in foreign currency. So let us say in a week you have 50 transactions in foreign currency. One option is Monday transactions of Monday apply the rate on Monday. Transaction of Tuesday, apply the rate of Tuesday. Like this. The other choice given by the standard is 
all these transactions of a week can be converted into rupees by applying average rate of that week by applying average rate of the week so if the average rate of the week is let us say 80 rupees per dollar then all transactions entered into that period will be converted at 80 rupees per dollar this is given for convenience simplification this is done so that companies will find it simple to apply this standard however if the average is not realistic if the average is not realistic then don't apply average take the specific rate of that date example of unrealistic unrealistic should not be taken example monday the rate is 70 tuesday just for example rate is 74 wednesday rate is 80 thursday rate is 75 friday the rate is 70 saturday 65 sunday 82 oh my god this is an extra ordinary example so much fluctuation will not happen but something like this if it happens then it is unrealistic then in that case the ideal accounting would be transaction which took place on monday apply 70 transaction which took place on tuesday apply 74 like this now as a student you are always supplied with this average rate in the question so you will take that okay if suppose you are given student is given sales transaction for the year the entire year sale total sale for the year is five thousand dollar now this sales may have taken place on 100 different days and the institute has given you one average rate 81 rupees per dollar so what the student will simply do the entire 5000 multiply by average rate so that simplifies your task so those transaction which occur throughout the year like income expense item we normally apply average rate for such item of course if the company wants the company can apply specific exchange rate on the date of transaction now the next issue is balance sheet date this was initial recognition now we have come to balance sheet date and on balance sheet date we have assets and liabilities which are denominated in foreign currency so what i have to do first i have to divide these assets and liabilities into two categories as discussed earlier monetary and non-monetary because the rules are different and if it is monetary item amount is receivable or payable in a fixed sum or determinable sum the standard says for monetary item apply the closing rate for monetary item apply the closing rate that is exchange rate on the balance sheet date however it should be realistic that means again it should not be too high or too low than usually what is the rate usually the rate of exchange in india for dollar is 76 77 78 75 74 this is usually the range of uh, exchange uh, rate between rupee and dollar but on the balance sheet date for some reason on the balance sheet date for unknown reason the exchange rate is 100 rupees so this is unrealistic then don't take 100 then you take what is the normal rate however so long as you are a student you don't have a problem institute will always give you closing rate 
सो विच आर द मॉनिटरी आइटम कैश बैंक इफ दीज आर इन फॉरेन करेंसी डेटर क्रेडिटर्स बिल्स रिसीवेबल बिल्स पेबल लोन टेकन लोन गिवेन Usually these items will be given to you. They will be translated at closing rate. What about non-monetary item? Now, in case of non-monetary item, we have to see what is the accounting policy the company is following. So there are two types of non-monetary items. There are two types of non-monetary items. which are these two types of non monetary item one where we follow historical cost model one where we follow historical cost model for example for property plant and equipment or for intangible asset or for long term investment we usually follow cost model or we carry them at cost in our books so since you are following cost model or historical cost model the standard says you will apply the same exchange rate you will apply the same exchange rate at which the transaction was originally entered into for example for example suppose a ppe item was purchased on 1 4 2018 and today is 31st march 23 so what i'll do i will check what was the rate on 1418 on 1418 the rate of exchange was 62 rupees per dollar so i will take that rate only for converting fixed asset in rupees if it is denominated in dollar or for example if i purchased a long term investment on 1417 that day the rate was 60 rupees per dollar today also i will take 60 rupees only because the logic is simple i am using historical cost model so due to change in exchange rate the value should not change whereas in case of monetary item i have to see today how much amount is receivable or payable if i have a 100 dollar debtor and the rate is 78 it means today i have to receive 78 rupees per dollar so debtor creditor bills payable bills receivable will be restated at closing rate but items for which we follow cost model we will apply exchange rate on the date of transaction that is balance sheet date and the, uh, that is rate of exchange on date of transaction historical rate some books write historical rate and there are second type of non monetary items which are carried at fair value some type some non monetary items are reported at fair value or revalued amount example inventory is measured at nrv current investment is measured at cost or fair value okay inventory is also measured at cost so now this is a very interesting point if you value inventory at cost if cost is lower then you apply exchange rate on the date of transaction but if you find the nrv is lower nrv means it is based on market value i will apply exchange rate when fair values are determined i will apply exchange rate when fair values are determined which means i will apply the exchange rate on balance sheet date because on balance sheet date nrv is calculated one more example current investment as 13 as 13 says current investment can be measured at cost 
or fair value whichever is lower if we are measuring it at cost exchange rate on the date of transaction will apply but if you are measuring it at fair value then exchange rate on the balance sheet will apply first you will do comparison in foreign currency cost of current investment is 100 dollar fair value is dollar 98 so i will take 98 first and that 98 will be multiplied by exchange rate on the balance sheet date or suppose the fair value is 102 dollar which means i will value it at 100 dollar which is the cost this 100 dollar will be multiplied at exchange rate on the date of transaction that is when this asset was acquired so these are the rules for balance sheet date so now i am going to make you write this summary otherwise you will go in a sleep mode non vibrating sleep mode please write summary of our discussion till now summary of our discussion in the center write down foreign currency transaction center write down foreign currency transaction so one day before the exam only read this much for the first page you don't need to read the whole page this chart is sufficient for first page so first the student will write on the left side initial recognition right side subsequent measurement right side subsequent measurement okay after writing initial recognition below that you write down initial recognition will be at spot rate on the date of transaction initial recognition will be at spot rate on the date of transaction average rate may be used what is option 2 average rate may be used and what is the purpose of this you can write for converting foreign currency into reporting currency for the purpose of converting foreign currency into reporting currency done now come to subsequent measurement three branches you will draw one two three you will write here first monetary items at closing rate if it is a monetary item debtor creditor bills receivable bills payable cash in hand cash at bank in foreign currency then those will be at closing rate next write down in the middle non monetary item at historical cost non monetary item at historical cost non monetary item at historical cost you will apply exchange rate at the date of transaction you will apply exchange rate at the date of transaction so if you have purchased that non monetary asset let's say pp 5 years ago you will apply the exchange rate of 5 year ago figure if you have purchased a long term investment 10 years ago you will apply the exchange rate of 10 year ago figure okay so example write down cost model of valuation of ppe cost model of valuation of ppe another example is when inventory is measured at cost when investments are measured at cost now next is non monetary item which are carried at fair value non monetary items at fair value so here the rule is the date when fair value is measured the date when fair value is measured the date when fair value is measured example revaluation model of revaluation model of valuation of ppe 
रिवेल्युएशन मॉडल ऑफ वैल्युएशन ऑफ पीपीई और यू कैन से एनआरवी ऑफ इन्वेंट्री एनआरवी ऑफ इन्वेंट्री एनआरवी ऑफ इन्वेंट्री अनदर एग्जांपल इज व्हेन यू वैल्यू इन्वेंट्री एट एनआरवी सो इन दैट केस द एक्सचेंज रेट ऑन बैलेंस शीट विल बी यूज्ड because we are measuring the inventory at their nrv so once you have completed drawing this diagram please inform me say yes those who have done raise hand those who have done come on and then we'll go to some number crunching some example everybody is still writing once you have done please raise your hand then i can proceed further okay so now we'll come to next paragraph number 4 recognition of exchange difference as we have seen first you record the transaction at some rate at the year end you record the transaction at some other rate when you will settle it or when you will realize it that day the rate will be different okay let us understand suppose there is a sale of 100 dollar goods sold 100 dollar on 1st february 23 the rate may be 80 rupees per dollar then balance sheet date the rate may become 81 rupees per dollar and finally when you collected the payment the rate was 82 rupees per dollar so first you will record at 80 then you will record at 81 then you will realize at 82 this can also happen with your creditor and loan etc so exchange difference is getting recognized there what is the treatment of exchange difference so now this is very important exchange difference relating to monetary item paragraph 4 exchange difference related to monetary item will be recognized as gain or loss income or expense in the period they arise irrespective of the fact that the difference relates to capital or revenue transactions so originally when the standard was issued they said that all exchange difference you transfer to pnl account it may relate to a capital item or it may relate to a revenue item so it may relate to debtor creditor it may relate to loan also so this is the original position of as11 later on some amendments were made which i am going to take after a few minutes on this point but for the time being any exchange difference related to monetary item will be recognized in pnl account so what i will do i will give you a small question for understanding student will write question also so take out your notebook total 6 or 7 important question i am going to dictate and that will make your concept clear for this chapter and then as a homework practice all questions practice all questions printed in your book okay these are all varieties of question taken from multiple sources so that your concept will be stronger so write down one question question write down on 13th april on 13th april 2022 on 13th april 
X limited purchase raw material. X limited purchase raw material on credit from on credit from a US supplier on credit from a US supplier for US dollar ten thousand for US dollar ten thousand at rupees at rupees sixty point three five two zero per USD. It means this was the exchange rate on this date. It means this was the exchange rate on this date. It means this was the exchange rate on this date. When you ordered or when you re uh, received that raw material, the rate was 60.3520. Next line write down. The balance of trade payable, the balance of trade payable was settled on, balance of trade payable was settled on 30th July 2022. On 30th July 2022 at 59.5625. At 59.5625. At 59.5625. Show accounting entries. Very easy question. Just for conceptual understanding. So, this is you can say concept question. What entry will be passed on 1st, 13th April? What entry will be passed when the transaction will be settled? So, first of all, you have to tell me whether it is going to give rise to creditor or debtor in our book quickly answer whether we are going to record creditor or debtor in this example creditor or debtor so we are going to record creditor because it's a purchase of raw material then whether creditor is a monetary item or a non-monetary item. So, all of you will say creditor is a monetary item. However, in this question, the problem will not arise because year ending date is not there. The transaction got settled during the year only. So, on this date, on this date, you are going to record at 10,000 into 3520. So, 10,000 into 60.3520 that will be 6,3520. And when you actually make the payment, you will make the payment at the rate of 59.5625, which will come to 5,95,625. So, there is a exchange difference. There is an exchange difference. Student will reply, how much is the exchange difference? How much is the exchange difference? How much is the exchange difference? So the difference is 7895. Okay. Next question is whether this exchange difference option A is a gain or option B loss i am asking you a question when you recorded the transaction you recorded the creditor at 6,3520. when you made the payment it was 595625 so there was a difference between these two figure is it a gain or is it a loss is it a gain or is it a loss quickly is it a gain or loss Will you call it as a gain or a loss? The answer is it is a gain because you have to pay less. Because you have to pay less. Due to decrease in the exchange rate, we had to pay less. So when you pay less, 
than what you initially thought you have to pay. Enjoy, dance, okay, dance, even with your legs also, that you have to pay less because of exchange rate fluctuation. So therefore, we will now write down journal entries. Journal entries, journal entries in the books of X Limited. Journal entries in the books of X Limited. Quickly, draw the format first. Draw the format first. Journal entries, books of X Limited, trade, particulars, debit, credit, amount in rupees, amount in rupees. Today practice all questions that you can do, okay, try. So on 13th April 2022, on 13th April 2022, we will record purchases account debit 10,000 into 60.3520 10,000 into 60.3520 and that comes to 6,3520 to trade payable account to trade payable account 6,3520 6,3520 then we will come to settlement date. What was the settlement date? 30th July. So on 30th July, I will pass the entry, trade payable account debit. We are settling the full amount. We are settling the full amount. So full amount debit. Trade payable account debit 6,3520. If you settle proportionate amount, then you will record proportionate figures. To exchange fluctuation gain account, which you had calculated correctly, was 7895, was 7895, and to bank account, and to bank account, what I will pay? I will pay 10,000 into 59.5625. And that is, that is equal to 595.625. Any query on this? Then the next issue is, what is the treatment of this exchange fluctuation gain? The answer is, this exchange fluctuation gain will be transferred to p &L account at the end of the year. 31st March 2023, 31st March 2023, you will write exchange fluctuation gain account debit 7895 to PL account, to PL account 7895, to PL account 7895 being transfer of exchange fluctuation gain 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 Okay, so this answer is over. We will go to one more question. This was the question on purchase. Now I will give you a question on sale. Write down question number 2. Question number 2, 3, 4, whatever you want to write. X Limited sold goods on. X Limited sold goods on. Please write down the question. First, I will create the basic background, then I am 
immediately going to give you a very advanced question and then you will be taken for a shock. So, we are writing next question. X Limited sold goods on 17 June 2014 for Euro 15,000. What is this symbol? Euro. Currency used in European Union. Around 14 countries use the same currency now. Like Germany, France. Okay, then uh, I think Italy. Austria and few more. So, they use a common currency called Euro. For 15,000, when the spot rate was, quickly, when the spot rate was, everybody will write in the notebook. When the spot rate was 1 Euro equal to 1 euro equal to 81.2184 81.2184 second line trade receivable was trade receivable was collected on 17th august 2014 trade receivable was collected on 17th August 2014, when the spot rate was, when the spot rate was Euro 1 equal to, Euro 1 equal to 81.4703, 81.4703, show the accounting entries, this is just the opposite of the previous question, so I will first explain with the help of this timeline, 17th June 14 and 17th August 14. So, there is no year ending date in between. Here we have purchased or sold, sorry, sold 15,000 euro into 81.2184 and here we have collected the payment 15,000 into 81.4703. So, what initially we will record daters at? We will record daters at 15,000 into 81.2184. So, that is I am getting 12,18,276. Please check. And then when you will collect the amount, that day the rate was. 81.4703. So, you are going to receive 1222054.50. Oh, again, happiness. Check the calculation. You are receiving more. So, you will be happy. You will be happy because you will receive more. Can any student tell me what is the exchange difference in this example? What is the exchange difference in this example? The exchange difference in this question is how much? Please reply. Everybody, come on. Exchange difference. Exchange difference is how much? Take your calculator and reply. You can do it. You just have to take the difference. Yes, come on. What is the exchange difference? 3778.50. Saurabh, 3778.50. Tanya, 3778.50. You are right. So, let us pass. Entry number 1, 2 and transfer the difference to p &L account. So, please write down books of X limited journal entries. Books of X limited journal entries. Draw the format. Usha is right. Journal entries date particulars debit credit. Calculation can be shown here. 
or calculation can be shown here. I give the choice to you. Student will have to write. After that, I am going to take a lengthy problem for exam purpose. Entry write down 13th April 2014. Come on. 13th April 2014. Trade receivable account debit to sales account. Trade receivable account debit to sales account. Calculation must be presented in your answer. 15,000 into 81.2184. If you have already drawn the timeline, then no need to write calculation again. Timeline is enough. 12,18,276. Then on 30th July, 30th July 2014. 30, 30th July 2014 bank account debit you will collect you will collect 15,000 into 81.4703 you can write here if you want you can write or in case if you have drawn timeline no need to write to exchange fluctuation gain, round off 3779. Sakchi is right. Kostub is right. Sanket is right. Round off 3779 to trade receivable. In this example, we have made a full collection. We have made a full collection. So, therefore, we will write full amount. Sometimes they will say that. Out of $15,000, only $6,000 was collected. Then I will do the calculation for $6,000 on the date of collection. And one last entry write down. Exchange fluctuation gain account debit. Same figure, 3779. To PL account. To PL account, to profit and loss account, 3779. To profit and loss account, 3779, being transfer of exchange fluctuation gain, being transfer of exchange fluctuation gain. This answer is over. Any query on these two basic questions? This was like a warm up exercise for this chapter. So, you have got a feeling of this chapter now. Chapter is very interesting. Now, I am going to give you another question. Please write down next question, which will be a little lengthy problem. Question Oh my God. So this question will cover lot of concepts in one problem only. Students are requested to write in neat handwriting and in the exam you will get something out of it. So please write the heading from the following information, from the following information, point one. Pass journal entries as per initial recognition. Pass journal entry as per initial recognition. Second, you write down prepare trial balance. Prepare trial balance as per initial recognition. Prepare trial balance as per initial recognition. Third, write down prepare trial balance as per subsequent recognition. Prepare trial balance as per subsequent recognition. Pass entry, prepare trial balance. Pass entry, prepare trial balance. So, we have to do that exercise. 
ASF Limited has rupee as reporting currency. ASF Limited has rupee as reporting currency. ASF Limited has rupee as reporting currency. So the question is in the form of a table, write down three columns date, transaction, exchange rate in bracket, rupees per dollar. Date, transaction, exchange rate, rupees per dollar. Question you have to write down. It's not in the book. 1st April 22. 1st April 22. Please write. Purchased machine. Purchased machine. Purchased machine dollar 10,000. On credit, that day the rate was sixty rupees. One five twenty two. One five twenty two. Purchase furniture dollar fifteen thousand on credit. Rate is sixty one. Exchange rate is changing every month. One six twenty twenty two. Another date one six twenty twenty two. Revalued furniture upward. Revalued furniture upward. By dollar two thousand to save time and space and energy, ignore depreciation. So we will not pass entry for depreciation. Depreciation ignored. Otherwise, before revaluation, you have to depreciate the asset for one month. So that is not to be done. Sixty-two is the rate. 1-7-2022 purchase goods for $20,000 on credit. Purchase goods for $20,000 on credit. 63. Come on. 1-8-2022 Please write down first. Sold goods for $18,000 on credit. 64 rupees the exchange rate. Come on, fast. 1-9-20-22. 1-9-20-22. Receive dollar 16,000 from data. So out of 18,000 dollar, can you see? We have received part payment. We have received part payment. So in this question, we have monetary item also, non-monetary item also. Revaluation of uh, non-monetary asset also, is it right? And we have part collection also from a debtor. So whatever kind of adjustment they can ask you, we have incorporated 65 and then write down at closing rate, at closing date on 30th September. Suppose this is your closing date, the exchange rate is rupees 66 per dollar the exchange rate is rupees 66 per dollar i hope all of you have noted this question so first i will have to record pass entries as per initial recognition so what i'll do as and when these transactions are happening i'm going to pass entries based on these rates then based on first set of entry, I will prepare a trial balance. Then I will check how many items in the trial balance are a monetary item. Those monetary item will be again retranslated, converted at closing rate. 
and after converting them at closing rate, I will again prepare a trial balance. Is it right? So we are here right now and we are going to pass the journal entries. So please write down books of ASF limited journal entries. Books of ASF limited journal entries. Date particulars debit credit figures in rupees. Date particulars debit credit figures in rupees. Okay. If you have scale, you can draw the format using a scale. I need to pass six or seven journal entries for each transaction. So first transaction is first transaction is first April 2022. First April 2022, ASF Limited purchased a machine for dollar ten thousand. On that date, the rate was sixty. So we will apply exchange rate on the date of transaction. Okay. So the entry will be machine account debit. Machine account debit. Ten thousand into sixty, six lakh. To creditor for machine, to creditor for machine, six lakh because we have purchased on credit. Being machine purchased, being machine purchased. One five twenty twenty two. Come on, one five twenty twenty two. Furniture account debit again we purchased the furniture on 1 5 2022 15 thousand dollar and on that day the rate was 61 kindly multiply 15 thousand into 61 9 lakh 15 thousand to creditor for furniture account to creditor for furniture account Nine lakh fifteen thousand to creditor for furniture account nine lakh fifteen thousand being furniture purchased being furniture purchased yes one student is saying nine lakh fifteen thousand Sanket Jain you are right being furniture purchased 1 6 2022 the furniture has to be revalued the furniture has to be revalued so i am going to ask you one question by what amount by what amount in rupees by what amount in rupees you will pass the entry entry will be furniture account debit to revaluation reserve that you have learned in as 10 but my question to this batch is very talented student is what will be the amount if you give me correct amount i will give you a reward the reward is return ticket from Jupiter planet. Okay. Come on. Go to Jupiter on your own. I will fund your return journey. So now you see the variety. Now the students have started giving variety of answers one person is saying one lakh twenty four thousand other is saying one lakh thirty nine thousand or thirty thousand that is the professional exam when you are asked a tricky question then students start answering different numbers 
one person is saying one lakh twenty two thousand. So 122, 124, 139, three answers I have already got. Anybody else who wants to try his luck, the answer is 1,39,000. Falak Mehta gave the right answer. So you can come to our office and collect your return ticket from Jupiter. Okay? 1,39,000 is the answer. Others will stop answering now. Saurav is saying 1,22,000. Now your question will be how the answer came to 1,39,000. Please write down the working of that. What is the value of this furniture? 15,000. 15,000? This is 15. It increased by 2,000 dollar. So plus 2,000. So now the value of this furniture is 17,000. And what you have learnt, it is a non-monetary item but carried at fair value. So I will revalue it at exchange rate on 1st June. The whole furniture will be revalued, not just 2000. What is your AS11 saying? In case of non-monetary asset carried at fair value, apply the rate of exchange when fair value is determined. So fair value is determined on 1st of June. So you will apply 62 rupees on entire furniture that is 17,000 that comes to 10,54,000 minus book value minus your existing value 9,15,000. So book value was 9,15,000 but now this furniture which is a non-monetary asset carried at fair value will be measured at 10,54,000 and therefore the difference is 1,39,000. Okay, everybody understood say yes. Those who have understood say yes, come on. So this is the working. So most of you got it wrong and that is what this institute is all about. So unless you do pre-practice for such question, most of you will write 1,22,000 in the exam and that is wrong. Now come to 1st July. On 1st July, it is easy. We have purchased goods on credit. $20,000 into 63. Come on. $20,000 into 63 is 12,60,000 to creditor for goods 12,60,000 being goods purchased 1,8,2022 we have sold goods also so the entry will be like a normal 11 standard entry debtors account debit to sales please write fast $18,000 into 64 to sales account 11,52,000. So we have recorded this data at 64, but we have collected some amount from the data. We have collected some amount from the data. And when you collected the amount, the rate had changed. Being goods sold, write down. And then is one more entry pending. You have collected $16,000 from out of this $18,000. So bank account debit. When you collected the funds, that day the rate was 65 on 1st September. So bank debit 10,40,000. But data we will de-recognize from our book. Proportionately, this is the value of $18,000. I will de-recognize $16,000. So $16,000 into 64. $16,000 into 64 is 10,24,000. Proportionately. Can you see? This is the proportionate amount we have de-recognized. And difference is your exchange difference. That 2 rupee extra which, 1 rupee extra which you have received 
one rupee extra which you have received is your exchange difference 16,000. Is exchange difference 16,000. So this is your being daters realized. But the answer is not over. This is the initial entries we have passed. Based on these initial entries, just prepare the trial balance. Which all item will come in the trial balance? Let us understand. Machine will come. Creditor for machine will come. Furniture will come, but the revalued amount will come. This and plus this. Creditor for furniture will come. They are not yet settled. Revaluation reserve will come. Purchase will come. Creditor will come. Dater will come. But some portion of data have been collected. Sales will come. Bank will come. And this exchange difference will come. So these items I am going to now put in the trial balance. Remember, we have not yet passed the entry on 30th September. So first you prepare trial balance on 30th September 22. Okay after initial recognition but before passing the subsequent recognition entry after initial recognition how the trial balance will look like this is how the companies work company for the whole year will record the transaction as and when they occur then at the end of the year they will sit down and check which of these are monetary items and monetary item will be translated at closing rate. So draw the format of trial balance as on 30th September 2022. Trial balance as on 30th September 2022 after initial recognition. After initial recognition. Right hand side two columns debit rupees credit rupees okay we'll take one by one the entries that we have passed machinery account was six lakh rupees just go as per your entries and you will find the figures there creditor for machinery was there six lakh furniture we have revalued so after revaluation, the furniture figure is 10,54,000. Add the two figures written in your journal entry. The total of the two entries in furniture account is 10,54,000. Creditor for furniture. This I have not changed. So creditor for furniture will be 9,15,000. And there is a revaluation reserve also. Revaluation reserve 1,39,000. Is it there? Revaluation reserve 1,39,000. Next item you have debited is purchase. So purchase will appear on debit side 12,60,000. Purchase will appear on debit side 12,60,000. Creditor for purchase of goods. Creditor for goods purchased 12,60,000. Then we have dater, but in case of dater, plus and minus, there is one debit, one credit. So the net dater is, net dater is 1,28,000. Please check. Net dater is 1,28,000. Sales. Sale is 11,52,000. Sale is 11,52,000. Then in the last entry, bank has also come. So bank debit 10,40,000. Last entry, bank debit 10,40. And in the last entry, there is one exchange difference has also come. Last line of the journal. Exchange difference 16,000. 
now the cross check is your trial balance should tally kindly suggest me whether your trial balance is tallying or not total of debit side anybody total of debit side of trial balance total of debit side of trial balance is 40 lakh 82000 40 lakh 82000 and check the total of credit side that is also 40 lakh 82000 that is also 40 lakh 82000 please check check the total is it correct falak mehta write 40 lakh 82000 now we have to identify listen to me now we have to identify which of these are monetary item machinery is carried at historical cost this is not a monetary item creditor for machinery creditor for machinery is a monetary item because we have to pay him ten thousand dollar creditor for furniture is a monetary item so monetary item will have to be retranslated at closing rate revaluation reserve is not a monetary item it is not not a monetary item purchase is not a monetary item creditor for goods is monetary item debtor is monetary item sale is not a monetary item bank is a monetary item but it is already in rupees it's already in rupees and exchange difference is there so now we just need to check that which of these are foreign currency monetary item four items are foreign currency monetary item which i am going to highlight now bank is a monetary item bank is a monetary item bank is a monetary item but it is it is not in foreign currency it is not in fc foreign currency so therefore bank does not require translation machinery is carried at cost model and it is a non monetary item so machinery will not be revalued furniture is non monetary item but already revalued already revalued so if it is already revalued no further adjustment required and other items are neither asset nor liability purchase sale exchange difference these are not asset and liability items so what i am going to do i am going to pass four more entries and bring these foreign currency monetary items at closing rate and bring this four foreign currency monetary items at closing rate they are denominated in dollar closing dollar rate has changed so now the student will write step number three journal entries on reporting date very interesting question but this gives you a very broad idea a very good idea how in india the companies do accounting of transactions in foreign currency okay so journal entry on reporting date all entries on 30th september 2022 first we will take creditor for machinery when we had purchased machinery the rate was 60 year 
and rate is 66 reporting date rate is 66 so the creditor for machinery will increase by 60000 rupees creditor for machinery will increase by 60000 rupees entry exchange difference account debit 60000 to creditor for machinery account 60000 narration homework narration is homework being creditors revalued being debtors revalued now we'll come to creditor for furniture understand when furniture was purchased the rate was 61 on reporting date the rate is 66 so by 5 rupees the creditor for furniture will increase entry will be exchange difference account debit 75000 15000 into bracket 66 minus 61 to creditor for furniture to creditor for furniture now we have creditor for goods creditor for goods when goods were purchased the rate was 63 on reporting date the rate is 66 so creditor for goods will increase by 3 rupees per dollar into 20000 dollar entry will be exchange difference account debit 60000 to creditor for goods 60000 to creditor for goods 60000 what about debtors total sale was 18000 dollar 16000 already collected so now the debtor outstanding is dollar 2000 so therefore i will have to multiply 2000 dollar into when the goods were sold the rate was 64 reporting date rate is 66 and the remaining data is $2,000 only. So I will pass the entry. Data's account debit to exchange difference $4,000. Data's to exchange difference $4,000. These are the entries company will pass at the end of the year or on the reporting date. They will prepare a trial balance identify foreign currency monetary item which needs to be revalued we have identified these four item and we have revalued them at closing rate so now the last question is you have to take the trial balance that you have prepared before passing these entries and increase the value of creditors and debtors by these amounts and take the total of exchange difference plus some exchange difference is already there in the trial balance and the net exchange difference will appear in the final trial balance so now we are going to prepare a final trial balance which will give the effect of subsequent recognition also so please write down the last part of the answer and that is the last part for today also so have some more patience 10 15 seconds more trial balance on 30th september 2022 trial balance on 30th september 2022 in bracket now write after subsequent recognition after subsequent recognition come on same trial balance copy creditor figure will change data will change exchange difference will change start machine no impact machine is a non-monetary item carried at cost model no impact creditor for machinery will now be measured at 66 rupees so that will become 6,60,000. Furniture already revalued. It is not getting revalued on 30th September. So here we will apply the rate 
of the date when it was revalued and that is already done 10 lakh 54000 creditor for furniture is a monetary item 15000 dollar into 66 9 lakh 90000 revaluation reserve is not a monetary item it is not a liability it is not an asset it is neither monetary item nor non monetary item so reserves are not restated 139000 purchases we will not change 260000 purchases 260000 but creditor for goods will change it is a monetary item 1322000 dater for sales will change but dater balance is only $2000 into 66 132000 sales figure will not change 1152000 and bank figure will not change assume bank is in reporting currency assume bank is in reporting currency bank is already in reporting currency so no need to retranslate an exchange difference will be these four entries and already you had a balance of 16000 in the trial balance so total exchange difference some of you will tell me please reply fast what is the exchange difference that will appear in trial balance there is a loss 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 gain gain so final figure exchange difference final figure is a net debit 175000 is a net debit 175000 now you tell me the total of debit side debit side of trial balance anybody total of debit side 42 lakh 61000 42 lakh 61000 thanga lakshmi surya is right total of credit side of trial balance come on anyone total of credit side of trial balance total of credit side 42 lakh 61000 sakshi is right surya is right so this answer is over just write down two notes and complete for future reference revaluation reserve is neither asset nor liability revaluation reserve is neither asset nor liability hence not restated at closing rate hence not restated at closing rate hence not restated at closing rate and last point write down last point write down exchange difference exchange difference will be transferred to pnl account exchange difference will be transferred to pnl account exchange difference will be transferred to profit and loss account is it over now everybody is it over yes so this answer is over we'll continue tomorrow at the same time thank you very much all the best enjoy your day bye bye